G'day, welcome to a big edition of the Ballarat Football Netball League Senior Footy Show. Thanks for our friends at McDonald's. My name is Genji. I'm joined by Tara Murray from the Sale Weekly. We've, uh, we've pulled you off the bench again, but I think... Uh, Look, you, you might have trouble getting out of the hot seat at the moment because the, uh, the ratings have gone through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say tw- two weeks in a row hitting the big time of the season. I don't know whether I'm the big gun or not, but yeah, we'll take bring it anyway. out the big guns. Uh, we know Shane is sitting on the bench. Uh, he's got a lot of great uh, things going on with uh, with all the junior footy netball and everything as well. So a lot of great things are happening over at uh, BFNL HQ. But we had a, a lot of great things happening around around 18 of senior football and the uh, Sunbury Lions finishing the season on a winning high, taking down Lake Windaree by seven goals. Look, obviously, Lake Windore didn't have much to play for. They were going to finish sixth anyway, whether yep. they won or lost. So I think they may have had a few players out, but you still want to enter finals on a winning match. You don't of course wanna, you do. You don't want to sort of flirt with that form. But for Summary Kangaroo, back on their home ground where they've only lost one game this season, and that was Tobacco Smash that, not that long ago. They... It wasn't an outstanding game, but they did the basics right. They got back to winning the contested footy. They were able to get the ball forward and got back to sort of what they were doing early in the season when they had all those wins on the park. So for them, it was good sort of to finish in a high. They could have quite easily just thrown the towel in and not taken this game seriously, having... um, knowing that they weren't playing finals for the first time since they were in the Ballarat Football League, but they were able to finish strong and finish their probably a disappointing season on a high. Well, look, at the end of the day too, they've... I know like when Reed didn't feel their strongest team but to, to have a seven goal win it can sort of cast the doubt in mind of some of the players like you know, in that situation there if you're Lakers you, you know, you're happy to lose if oh, you're never happy to, to lose but if you, if you lose in those such circumstances you don't want to be a big margin I think on paper that's a big margin that could cause a bit of doubt it is, and obviously, and Lakers will take on the informed team of the competition in the first week of the finals as well. So that's the one thing there. You don't, some, as I was speaking to a different Ballarat coach, which I'll talk about later on, he said, you don't want to flirt with form heading into finals. He's like, you want to enter on a winning note no matter what you've got up for grabs in that final round. And Lakers will end at, end at their season, their regular season with a loss, and now they're going to have to bounce back in the first week of the finals. Who was the standout for you for summary? Jaden Eels was the standout in the ruck there. So he's sort of taken over the ruck duties this season without David Kovacevic there so it's a little bit a different um, look up in the middle of the ground for the Lions and he's shown it he's a very young Ruckman yep. and he's a developing Ruckman who has come through the Sunbury system has played TAC Cup and VFL as well so you've got a young guy who's sort of building he did miss a few weeks with injury as well which didn't mm. help and he's sort of built there Alec Megan finished the season on a high the two were boys were good and so was Jack Hannett who used the ball really well How does Sunbury shape up now heading in the next season what, what, what's your sort, your sort of take now that the season's finished Look they were disappointed and I spoke to Ben Jordan following the match and he said it was a disappointing season for them playing finals is something they're not a accu- not playing finals is something they're not accustomed to mm. so particularly if you've got jordan as your surname as well it is and obviously the lions themselves i don't know when they didn't play finals in the rdfl they had- their last last finals appearance that they uh, last time they didn't make finals was in 1994 exactly so you look at it for them it, they're not used to- there's a lot of process- they've got a very young side they do need to add a few bits and pieces and that was the one thing we didn't know how they'd go this year they lost a lot of um star power and yep. they probably didn't have the depth they had in the previous year so it'll be interesting how they go forward I know they're still to decide whether Ben will um, coach next season he has said he he's happy to go on yep. but the club's still to make that decision so we'll probably find out a little bit more about that in the next few weeks but in the end a disappointing season a lot of positives with a lot of the young guys getting game time in the seniors their reserves still are in finals as well so they've still got a finals team there but it, overall disappointing yeah well hopefully they can uh, bounce back for next year Dali took down and East Point handing East Point only their third loss of the year. It is, and in the end, it was quite a strong last quarter from mm. the Devils. And the Devils did it. They only had 20 um, fit men at that point. They had two players on the bench um, in Heath, Scotland, and Jake Edwards, who were both battling um, nickel injuries. So they, they sort of iced them up the, that last quarter, knowing that they were already going to play finals. But they were able to, um, in the end, get a 20-point win, and they are pretty happy with that. They were disappointed with their performance against North Ballarat City the week before. So another top two side. They played the top two sides in the final two rounds. It's ended up, and they are disappointed with that performance, where this time, speaking with Heath, he said it was a well-rounded performance that everyone sort of played their role they're finding when they don't play well only four or five of guys are playing well when they do play well they're getting a more even spread across the board at various point i know that uh i know they were missing a few but every side's sort of missing a few at this time of year as well they were trailing probably for about 98 to 99 percent of the game Dali just had that much control it was and it was a similar situation to lake windery they didn't have anything to play for. They were going to finish on top of the ladder. And that's where I was speaking with Heath. And he sort of said, in his situation, if he was East Point, he'd still like to go in, yeah. into finals on a winning note, especially against a side that you might play um, in come finals. You could play for them in finals first, second week of the finals. So 
you've got a side that's had a really good performance there. Um, it was a confidence boost for Dali. How much East Point take out of it? I don't know. <laughs> mm, yeah, we saw a, a sort of identical situation last year where there might be similar ladder positions, but it was Bacchus Marsh actually lost to Redan in the final round of the home and away season last year as well. Bacchus Marsh, of course, they um, I think they, they finished the first or second, and uh, Redan was sort of, I think they were fourth as well. So, um, yeah, and, and Bacchus Marsh sort of went in on, on losing form, and then they ended up going out, uh, well, they... Lost the up, grand final. Yeah, lost the grand final because they ended up losing two games during the final series. So, um, it's... Yeah, it's, if, if you're the top side, you want to be winning, even though uh, the, the top spot is assured. It is. You do want to win. I think every team wants to win. Mm. I, well, most do. I know I have one team in in a different league had 12 outs heading into the final round mm. because they were playing their first round opponent in the final round. So, yeah. and they ended up getting smashed in the first week of the finals. So you don't want to wow. flirt. You don't want to flirt with that form, and it'll be interesting to see how it works for East Point next week. Speaking of back smash earlier, they went down to Melton by seven points. I have the privilege of getting down and watching this one, and Melton, in my mind. They were simply outstanding. They led for probably about 95% of the game. They were simply terrific at every uh, every turn. I know we didn't get named in the best, and I sound like a bit of a broken record during the week, but I thought Ben Archer was simply magnificent. He was fantastic in the ruck. He was great around the midfield, able to push from half back to half forward. I did genuinely think he had uh, Dan Burton's measure covered on the day. Look, and Ben Archer is one guy Melton are going to really rely on finals. He's one of only not many that have played senior finals. He did play in a senior premiership with Golden Square a number of years ago. I think him and Matt Denham are about the only two with yep. a lot of, with any finals experience yep. in that lineup. So they're very inexperienced. Like, and for them, it was a key. They, they're the informed team of the competition. They've won mm. seven matches in a row, and the only team that had got hold of them in this season was Bacchus Marsh. And now they've got a win over Bacchus Marsh, yep. so they're going to take a lot of confidence in Bacchus Marsh. Still hasn't been convincing of late. They've yeah. been a little bit up and down. I saw them play against the Sunbury Lions. They won that quite easy, but then the Sunbury Lions form hasn't been great either. So it's going to be an interesting first week of the finals for both these sides. And I don't think anyone would have picked at the start of the year that Melton would be the highest finishing Eastern Block team. That is quite extraordinary, and it's great that they, you know, it's interesting. They all sort of finished in the sort of the same, like you had three, four, five. They're all Eastern Block teams, and I think uh, one of the intriguing things for Melton, um, another big talking point that did come out of the weekend, is that uh, we talk about you know, player points for each game. Well, they fielded twenty five for probably not the you know for for first of many many times throughout the year, and Ben Archer is the only player that is not a one pointer that uh, that ran out on the park on the weekend. Exactly, and that shows the the growth this club has done over the last few years. They've really built this side. Obviously, Brad Murphy did a lot of work with them and they got close to playing finals on so many occasions. And now they've finally got there and they've done it on the back of local talent. Matt Denham obviously come back into the side, but then Matt is a um, Melton junior after playing with Bacchus Marsh for a few years. So you've got that. It's their local talent that's got the job done and that's what you sort of want to see in local football. And I know that's why they brought in the point system to try and get local players staying at local clubs. And we've seen a good indication of that with Melton. Redan and Ballarat. Uh, fought out a, a memorable shootout, and at the end of the day, we had uh, one star go out and kick ten goals, and that was uh, the experience of Dean Chester, who's uh, who's played a lot of great roles around the team for Redan, and uh, his ten goals was enough to get the other Lions over the line for a very valuable win. But geez, you would have loved to have gone out there because you would have seen goal after goal in perfect conditions. I almost couldn't think of a better way to enjoy a Saturday afternoon. It was like taking us back in the years to Ablett first Salmon. You obviously yeah. had you had Dean Chester up one end, kick ten for Redan, and you had Jack Savile and kick seven up the other end for Ballarat. So you had a shootout with uh, with key forwards at both ends of the park, and both these teams were looking for a bit of pride. Obviously, neither were pl- were playing finals. Neither I don't think could switch um, positions. Possibly if Melton South won and Redan lost, it may have switched there. But I it, think Redan have actually gone on top of Mountain South. Uh, Bar- sorry, uh, Ballarat. Ballarat, yeah. which yeah, gives them a little bit there, and yeah. they and they send out their coach Brendan Peace on a winning note. He yeah. has um, said that he is stepping down after his third stint of coach there for family commitment. So he's a premiership player at the club. He's a premiership coach at the club. So they've sent him out on a winning note. Yeah, simply fantastic. Great work there by uh, both both sides. I think they they could do themselves very proud there. And uh, Mountain South went down to Sebastian. We talk about a you know a goal kicking uh, feast there. James Keeble kicked a lazy ten goals and uh, a fantastic performance by him to. Uh, to guide Sebas to, uh, to a big high to finish the season. Look, and you've got Sebas has finished seventh this year. Mm. It's probably that I think it's been a, quite a while since they've finished that high on the ladder. We all know how much they've struggled in recent years. Both of these clubs have. Mm. And in the end, Sebas has sort of shown this season. They did bring in a few uh, former VFL players, which does really help bring a little bit of experience into that side. But they've shown the development and the work they've done the last few years is starting to build. In the end, it probably wasn't much of a surprise. Both of these teams wanted to finish on a high, but in the end, Sebas sort of showed the gap between them and 
and Nelson South, which has claimed the wooden spoon. It could almost be a, a season of what is for Sebas because they could have beaten, if not for poor kicking, they could have beaten back as much the previous week, which that victory would have uh, propelled them into the top um, top six, which you know, in a dream scenario, geez, you did have Lake Windore going, well, you know, do we go out and feel that uh, they would have been playing for their finals in that sense there? And uh, and then Ballarat did beat Sebastian earlier on the year by over 10 goals. But I think the consolation there for the Boroughs is the last team to finish seventh and just miss out on finals, end up finishing the uh, the following year as minor premiers, and of course that's East Point. So um, there is that consolation there if you keep rebuilding, which uh, East Point have done terrifically, and Sebastian going down through the same path. I think there's some great things on the horizon. Look, I think there was quite a few clubs who um, were thinking what could have been when you had um, Summary, which finished eighth, was just mm. a game outside that top six. They dropped matches to Ballarat and Redan. You've got Sebast dropped a couple of matches. They probably should have won. Those two win those matches. You've got an even closer top six and possibly Bacchus Marsh missing out on the top six, So, yeah. which would have been a massive shock there. So it's been a quite an interesting season, probably a closer season than we've seen in past years. Obviously, last year went down to the final round as well when I think you had eight. Uh, you could have eight, possibly nine yeah. teams possibly going. But I think it's been a little bit more close and a little bit more upset besides each point that's on top of the ladder. And then Mountain South, uh, who... Well, Down the bottom, yeah. You, there's not much between second and eighth. Yeah, it just uh, shows just how strong this competition is growing. Well, thanks to our friends at McDonald's. Thanks to you, Tara, for jumping on board. We'll, uh, we'll catch up with you later on the week to talk about our first week of finals. Thanks for having me.